not on my birthday. Is it? Is that today? It is today. It's to, <laughs> dude, <laughs> dude, it's today. <laughs> We're potty on your birthday. That I, sucks. Welcome to every album ever with Mike and Ox. My name is Michael Winsor, and I'm joined as always by my sitting right next to me, having a good time. Hey, doing all right, doing all right. Co-host Alexander Volt, say hello. Hello. This is every album ever the podcast where we listen to every single album in the world, one artist at a time. It's a new discography per episode, and today we'll be talking about every album by Unwound. Unwound. This was uh, this was requested by Cole. Thank you, Cole, for, for supporting us and being cool and liking us and wanting us to talk about bands. Uh, it's a great show. I'm very excited to talk about this band. I nice. never had no, I had no exposure. It feels Same. like a, a band that we should have encountered, given the bands that we've covered in the past. Same. Yeah. I, I had no idea what I was getting in through. There were some, there's some lows. There were some highs. I say, Over. I call it all highs, baby. All highs. I call it all you. highs. Love this band. Yeah. Fucking love this band. I, 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 whew. I, I a lot to talk about before getting to all that please support us if you like us like the video if you if you do and dislike it if you absolutely hate us and you hate your family because that's the only kind of person who would dislike a video on youtube you fucking loser what's wrong with you sorry <laughs> uh, you can also uh check out the unwound playlist uh on spotify there's a link in the description we got plays associated with pretty much every episode uh you can find those at every album blah 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 Patreon.com slash every album ever for the place where you, you, you where we, we really need help and support. And you guys are actually helping and supporting us. So thank you so much for everyone who's joined. That feels surreal. It so does. Thank you to the, the new people. Oh, so much, so much. Uh, yeah, your bonus episodes are uh, super early access to Loose Ends episodes. There's like a bunch banked there right now that are just sitting there for the next foreseeable future. Um, 20% off all merch. And of course, if you're tier two, bigger than Jesus, then means you can request artists for us. It's official now, Alex. It's official. We Let's, cannot take any more non-paid requests. That's the only way. It's officially gotten to the point where there, there's that many people requesting on Patreon where it's just always on the schedule. And I, I like it that way. It's very nice. Yes. So if you want us to cover your, your favorite band or a band you hate, which is far f- well, funnier, uh, <laughs> go to the Patreon. And uh, yeah, you can also see our schedule in advance and you can vote on, on upcoming episodes for us. And, and it, it's, it's fun stuff. It's cool stuff. People are there are very, I love these people, man. They're just a, a, a harboring a nice little cult of absolute music nerds. And that's what I, that's what I, that's what I like, baby. That's what I like. Yeah. The, uh, you know, let's call us living color. Cause we got a cult personality. Mm. Burn it, burn it. Yeah, yeah. I was just, wait, that was Ira Smith. Why did <laughs> I just sing the, the riff to walk this way. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, wait. That's the one. Yeah, CM Punk's music. There we go. Uh, what the fuck? Okay, yeah. So, Unwound, Unwound, Unwound. Uh, like we said, requested by Cole, a uh, post hardcore band from Olympia. I was about to say Seattle. There we go, Olympia. Two different places. Very I, different. Because I, I have I've been outside of LA. I've actually. Oh, been, you mean just period? Uh, yeah, I've like ventured outside of LA once in a while. Just to Olympia, and that's it. Just to Olympia and Seattle to be like, yep, these are two different p- they, places. They are. They are. Indeed. And then I went back home immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I feel like I, I'm afraid to visit somewhere because I'll just stay. I'll just find someone's backyard and just stay forever. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, so let's see. Also, also before I get going, uh, sh- shout out to uh, Dylan Gubbig. Gubbig. For. Uh, purchasing one of their box sets and being like hey man you should come work on it at my house Ooh. and so uh yeah i gotta i gotta read some history about the band that's not available on the interwebs and i sound slightly more informed than usual thank so, christ because I, I couldn't find oh there's not much about them uh i didn't even finish the whole thing but uh yeah <laughs> could, could let that part out could let that part <laughs> <laughs> I read I read most of it. Also, they have four box sets released by n- the Numero group. Mm-hmm. And so this was the like number four box set. So it was like strictly about like the end of the band. Okay. Yeah. Cause there, yeah, there's a, there's a whole bunch. Uh, I ended up listening to one of them, the, the empire empire box set because the, their last album on Apple is missing a track for no reason, mm-hmm. but it's on empire. The yeah. whole thing beginning to end so i just if you're on apple that's the best place to hear listen to the last all about it i just don't get why these things happen it's just and we're just gonna take out one song and then that's that's it numero group you guys do good work fix that uh oh yeah yeah that's right they're they're the ones in charge yeah yeah 
Well, I mean, in charge of the. I no, mean, that's that's the box. They're, the, they're just the box there, right? They're not. They're not the actual record. Well, no, they, they own. They, oh, they own all the, all the albums. They own all the albums. Well, they didn't get the fuck on it, man. What's wrong? With, okay, come on, come uh, on, son, come on. So, what, what what are you doing here? What, 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 who are they? What's going on? Uh, yes, the from Olympia, Washington, formed by Justin Trosper and Vern Rumsey. Uh, Trosper and yeah, Vern Rumsey. Uh, Trosper's. I mean, they, they sound like completely made up names. They do. Like, like the way I stumbled through them would be like when a cop's like, "What's your name?" You're like you Vern, Vern Rumsey. Vern Rumsey sounds like a character in Oliver Twist. It's oh, it's ridiculous. I yeah. mean, it's cool still, but <laughs> whatever. So yeah, uh, Justin vocals, guitar. Vern is bass. Uh, released a demo ninety one. Recorded an album ninety two, which would not be seen until ninety five. We'll talk about. We that. will be covering that one. And then uh, original drummer was replaced by a Miss Sarah Lund. Yeah, it was originally Brent Zendino, or Zendino, and he plays on the on the first album that, well, it's technically the fifth album uh, or fourth album. You know, I forgot. I think it's the fourth album, but it, it, it was originally the recorded fir- yeah. Yeah, in like 90, 92 or something. Um, something I found interesting about this band is like the ties to other bands. I had like no idea like they're, you know, tied to Blonde Redhead. Oh, right. Yeah, I saw a little thing about that. Yeah, and then Carp with a K, which is oh, uh, yeah. Jared from Big Business, his first band. So, um, which makes sense, you know. I in a way I I would never have guessed big business connection. Well, well, yeah, I I don't I just assume all these bands in Olympia know each other. So. Oh, yeah, no shit. Yeah, that makes more sense. I don't know if that's actually true, but yeah, anyways, this crazy connections to good bands. Same with Slater Kenny, connect yeah, connect That's as right. Well. And that even uh even Elliot Smith because um I'll get to it when we get there, but yeah. Yeah. Elliot Smith and Slater Kenny were like the big breakouts for Kill Rock Star. Oh, it's right. Yeah. yeah. That's the label they would stay on for the whole time, right? The whole time. The whole pretty, time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, they, you know, signed a Kill Rock Star and, you know, that leads us into the thing. And I will say, if you look at this, they pretty much put out an album every year. Yeah. Well, like staying on like grueling touring schedules like workhorses workhorses and in, insane yeah. work ethics so. and, and the f- i mean we're, gonna, we're obviously, obviously going to get into each album specifically but my god the musical evolution with this band it is it's exactly what i crave in all music like, yeah start out with whatever the hell you start off with who cares but keep growing keep yes. going don't stop until the final album is unrecognizable and this is a perfect example of that kind of thing i love it yeah, it's just, uh, I'm not going to, I got a little bit fatigued fairly early on and then uh, took a corner. Took a corner, didn't it? it yeah, yeah. And I didn't, I so didn't get fatigued. I hear you. Hey, listen, folks, yeah. I listen. So there's a, there's seven albums total. I listened to five in one day. Holy and shit. And I, I don't mean back to back to back. I mean, two times, two times, two times. Holy two, shit. Yeah. Uh, Thoroughly enjoy this band. Uh, and then, I, oh God, go ahead. I woke up early today. I listened to four albums today. Oh, really? Yeah. I so. gave, I think I gave a, I think I listened to two today, but it was just, I mean, I've already heard them all sure. so many times. Yeah. I just like a, a little reminder before I. This was one of the most difficult bands to divvy up picks for in, in a long, long time. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm angry. I can't give multiple favorites. Uh, it, I picking, thought picking I, the worst felt haphazard. Like I, I don't even. I think they're all good. I thought it was going to be harder for me, and then I was like, "Nope, this is the way it's going to go." No ifs, ands, or buts. I I switched my picks countless times. I'm so comfortable yeah. in my picks. Oh man, uh, oh, this is that's exciting, guys! You guys, guys, gotta check this band out. Oh, my God, guys, 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 so guys. cool. Uh, so, like we said, seven albums total. First one came out in 1993. Technically, the first one was recorded in '92, but didn't come out till later. Yeah, so first 1993 and last 2001. This is a band I'm fucking sad broke up. Just looking at the trajectory. Mm. Uh, and they ain't getting back together no they are not r.i.p vern r.i.p oof um 
but might as well get into it. You ready? I'm ready. Hell yes. Yeah. So this came out 1993. This is Fake Train. Like how the cover to this album is this a Tom, a Tom Jones album cover. Oh, yeah. It's similar to, to, to the next album where it's just a different album cover that they put on it. <laughs> <laughs> they don't believe in getting album art made. They'll just... <laughs> Dude, they're smart. I've been waiting on my album art for fucking a year. <laughs> Way too long. Way too long. So this is clearly clearly rough production. It's, it's yes. basically demo quality. Yeah. So you can hear the... The Fugazi influence, yeah. the, the Sonic Youth influence. It sounds like utter dick, though. It, it sounds so bad, but it, all it does is remind me of just hardcore punk. So the production ended up bothering me a lot less than I expected. Mm-hmm. Because I'm talking over, but this is a good song. It's not as good as Dragula, but... Listen, if you compare everything to perfection, you're going to be disappointed, Alex. That's true. That's true. All right, we kind of get, kind of get the idea. Fairly straightforward, post-hardcore, uh, hooky, neat. I dig it. That's fine. I like it. I don't love it. I like this album. I think they get infinitely better which is a objective fact, yep. but I still couldn't dislike this album. I couldn't give it any worst. I just like it. Yeah. It's like it just fine. Um, I think that second song, Lucky Acid, hits way more. Sure does. Harder. Uh, uh, it feels like 20 people are screaming at you on that song when at most it's probably two. These dudes at this stage, at a certain point, it drops off, but the feedback is profound. <laughs> they love feedback. They love them some feedback. Yeah, Lucky Acid is fucking rad. And I, most, like, this is a shockingly consistent album. Like, by the end of it, I was confused at how good it was. Like, this has all the makings to just be average or boring for me, but they're just good songs. They're just, they're just interesting. Like, I wasn't expecting uh cantina to be that melodic and pretty i think that's one of the strongest songs on it's fantastic on here. Um, it's it's very i mean the harmonics they, they're doing it's a, it's a very fugazi kind of way where like like double picking harmonics the the opening specifically the guitars are like very very bright and yeah yeah and it blends seamlessly into where i'm sorry where are and was or is which is another instrumental um they they Typically do like one instrumental per album, something like that. That's um, that's one of those songs where I was like, I can hear why a band like Trail of Dead listens to this. Like I can hear where Trail of Dead got their sound from. Mm-hmm. I, haven't, I haven't heard them. Mm, they're good. I haven't listened to them in a long while. Uh, but yeah, so so where are and was or is, which is, man, it's hard for me to say that fucking title. Uh, it's, it's a mouthful. It's repetitive and shit, but... I don't know. The, the, when these dudes get repetitive, it's always very, um, it's, it's more hypnotic than it's not. Yeah. It's a swans type of repetitive where you kind of want to hear it a bunch. Plus it there's like little things thrown in there. There's a lot of elaboration. It's fucking neat. I think there's only like one or two songs where I'm like throughout their whole discography where I'm like, this goes on too long. There's a couple that probably could have, could have been shortened, but I, I like, but for whole discography, that's an amazing feat to, to do for sure uh there's some i mean the only songs i i thought i didn't like valentine car but it's fine um i like i yeah. like that one it's a little sludgier a little little dirtier than the rest yeah, yeah. uh the, the one that i definitely can't get behind is pure pain sugar uh and rap i honestly i think it's more rap it's more of a standard punk song uh with I, more scraping and feedback i like pure pain sugar because i think uh honoris oh yeah uh, honorosis honorosis and um the one before that i forgot yeah yeah we're r and was or is um i kind of like i like them both but they're they're kind of similar and then to me pure pink sugar this breaks up the like more jammy like spacey qualities it does it's more it's more straightforward it's funny that the bass in that song is super out of tune in like a total early misfits kind of way sure uh where it's just impossible to ignore. Uh, I do like Honor Roses a lot. 
too. Like that was that was the point. Uh, the point in the record was like, oh, these motherfuckers got riffs. These motherfuckers mm-hmm. got riffs. Uh, st- and speaking of which, strong mean riff to spar, spar star spangled hell. Uh, it's it's one of the earlier examples of their dy- their use of a dy- dynamics. How, the way they can go super super low and quiet, and then they bring it back up all within one, yeah. one song. Uh, Sarah does not like her drumming on this album, but it's awful. It's the worst thing on the album. Go ahead. Sorry. I like it on uh, on Star Spangled Hell. I think the like rawness of it. The, so it's not just the production that's rough. The performances, pretty much across the board, are are pretty sloppy. Sure. And I I think the, I mean the worst is the drums. And when I when I heard just when a I, couple kids making albums, yeah, for sure. When I first heard, I was like, oh no, the drummer's not tight. Like I don't know what they're like. I get what they're doing. They're not bad, but they're just not tight, and that's gonna like. That's gonna affect the overall like glue nature of, of the band, and then right. and then the guitar is 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 so so fucking drippy, sloppy, and covered in feedback. It's like there's no way this can be a tight band. That changes very quickly. Let me just say, listening to this band start to finish was like watching kids grow up yep. in like super fast speed. But like particularly Sarah, yep. like she becomes a fucking powerhouse, like. At a certain point, not even that late into the discography, like third, second, third album, she's writing drum beats that make the songs for me. Yeah, they're like the beat is what drives the song. And yes, she is like, you know, now like on my underrated drummers list. Oh, for sure. And I think uh, I have no idea how true it is, but I saw a little thing saying that she was the reason the band went in in a more post hardcore direction. Because I mean, you listen to we're, we'll talk about it at some point. Uh, the very first recordings of the band, and it was just mostly hardcore punk. Mm-hmm. And then she comes in and she does not standard punk stuff. <laughs> so therefore, yeah. uh, great. To, I li- I'm happy for that. Yeah, I don't think she was a fan of the like super fast. I don't even want to say abrasive because there's a lot of abrasive things here. But, tons, yeah. tons. Uh, it, it, it ultimately it was it was not just a a good musical decision, but it's also a good like variety decision. Like we, I mean, this is ninety three. We had we had hardcore punk for so many years. Also, we, we need more of that. Also, yeah, it never feels like they're trying to like cash in on like the grunge trend. Not even close. Either, so uh, they also, um, I mean, I mean, you can kind of compare them to like Drive Like Jihu and stuff. Uh, like especially in in a few albums, they they as Justin really has this motherfucker's voice. Like goes through so many different weird shifts. It's cr- it's crazy because I was like, did they like switch up singers and then like Vern? I think he only sings like two songs uh-huh. at like on the last two albums. He Justin just changed. Like he's not like a he's not a good singer, but he keeps trying different things and. Mostly it's buried in the mix anyway, so it's mm-hmm. never offensive. Like in the early stuff, he sounds just like I forget his name from Jelly like Jihu, the singer. And certain times he sounds like fucking Guy Pichotto from Fugazi. And then later on, he's just all right. He's just well, okay. Just it, it goes all over the place. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, so go back to the album a little bit. Uh, the closer feeling, feeling, feelings real, feelings with a dollar sign, real, uh, almost slint like. It's like their first. I mean, they're all, they've always been good at closers. I feel like for the most part. Yeah. But I wasn't expecting that to go that uh, dichotomized to go that fucking minimal um, this early I, in in discography. I felt like that was like extra noisy. I wasn't. I mean, I think about Slint here and there for a yeah. few songs, but that song I was just like, it, you know, it goes big, but like yeah. the, the way they it brings it back down. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're uh, they're very good at doing these these quieter. Yeah, and it's not just like a you can call it loud, quiet, loud, but it's not. It's not. It's it's way more subdued than that. It's way more dynamic. I keep saying that. Sure, but it, it, it's it's more of a post rock kind of thing. The the way they do it. And yeah. Eventually, they'll they'll elaborate. They'll fuck out of it. But for now, it's just a post hardcore record. That's a little rougher on the edges, but I think it's still solid. Uh. A- a pr- not an amazing album but you know if if it was just like a new bang you're like there's some there's some ta- 
you know, it, they could go places. Exactly. This this one, I was uh, I was a little nervous because like I I liked it. I was like, I like this way more way more than I thought I would. But I could see them not progressing. I totally see them not progressing. Mm-hmm. So I had no. Still, this does not give you a good representation at all of what they could, what they can do. Again, it's like watching kids grow up. It's crazy. Uh, but you ready for the next? I'm ready. Hell yeah! This is 1994's new plastic ideas. a way better opener than the, the last album. It, it for sure. And I like this. I mean, the, the production here is already... It's not a huge step, but it's a noticeable step. This is noise rock as fuck. This is like... This is what I think of whenever I, I imagine Noise Rock. And yeah, they already sound tighter. They do. Still not super tight, but a lot more than the last yeah. one. Yeah. I guess also if you're like out on the road every day, and I know they they workshop songs on tours, so. Yeah. I would say overall, their openers are the weakest parts of their albums. Like across the board, I like, guess it's a good song, but yeah, you always look at track two of most albums like that should have been the fucking like point. Yeah. I would agree with this one too. Yeah. All right. Um. Yeah. What was? W- what was? What was wound? Uh. That or wound? You know, what? I don't know if it's wound or wound. Either way, that were it feels more unique and special and. I didn't, I didn't love it. Uh, and by the way, worst, least favorite. Oh, and this was shit. this is a good album. Like this is not a. a this was I, hard for me. This was fucking tough. It's just the, it's the one that I found the. Um, so it, the this one is um, it's similar to the last one, mostly in, in, in I style of it, songwriting. I think it's pretty different because Re- this is the only one that I felt was not a huge step forward it, it's a step I, forward but not a like compared to for, like from the album three and on the steps forward are very noticeable this is not quite that big i i noticed it like um and then i read this was more more driven by uh melody and odd time signatures and then you get songs like abstractions now it's fucking awesome instrumental and surreal yeah. and arboretum and yeah he- hexens oh uh hexenzine yeah like those songs i i enjoyed those songs at this point in their you know discography yeah i enjoyed those songs way more than like the louder angrier violent stuff yeah except all souls day that song that song is just punch people in the face throw it on your your workout jams like really because that song specifically i like it but it felt so underwhelming following abstractions because just how unusual and and epic that song feels no i i love how they're polar opposites like abstractions is you know dreamy and jammy and then all souls day is just like i love i love the guitar tone on there like i think it's it's one of their better like angry songs that's that's the thing i didn't feel it to be that energetic i felt like this needs i need more energy it, it felt too weak for me like honestly you're crazy <laughs> you're fucking uh, crazy I still dig it though and uh yeah and like arbor reading like, like the that first chunk is super super early nirvana yeah just just in, in vibe and even kind of the way justin's singing it's interesting uh but th- then it gets real moody and minimal mm-hmm. uh they pull it off fucking well and, and that's like the big thing about this album is like when they start implementing the the really drawn out spacier stuff and it's still good but i think overall that i felt the songwriting was less memorable than the last album Mm. even though it does sound mm. better and the pacing isn't quite it's not their worst paced record it's not it's not badly paced at all it's just it, it came down to this one in the first album sure and hearing it back to back i just like that one more uh this is the one that's like i can do without it i still like it i don't want to give it bad 
any kind of negative yeah press I, quote unquote but i like it more than the first one um on envelope mm. i i like that one because the first two songs are just like punch you in the face aggressive and then there's like some more dynamics there also that's fucking that song is that song is insane that's yeah. twisted as fuck also i don't know if it was done on purpose to be like a double entendre but i noticed he sings uh i won't miss you if you let her and let her sounds like letter the way oh. he, he pronounces it so i'm like if that was done on purpose that's very clever very clever love shit like that yeah Bet, oh man i hope it's on purpose oh so do i uh he seems like a very clever writer so i listening to these songs especially as they go on like these are these are not dummies like th- this is very very unique songwriting and and for one they got riffs which is like all right that's uh it, it's um what do i think of when i think of people like like riff writing it's like there's there's there you can either have a strong riff or complex structures mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm i'm a fan of both types of things uh and they they really got bold sure which is yeah. fucking rare Punk. and crazy they got the one two punch mm. uh and then and then uh the closer fiction friction lovely lovely uh passionate moving their, their fucking closers are it's pretty, wi- pretty yeah, bad it's it's weird they're uh yeah their openers are eh, and then the closers are usually a good time yeah i mean i'm just kind of gushing over an album i just gave wars to but all, it's all, still good yeah also like uh you know except for one album these are all very manageable lengths oh yeah there's, there's one super lengthy one but yeah for sure yeah i mean that's that's kind of the the, the thing with post hardcore stuff noise rock mm-hmm. there's not too many double triple albums in that genre also very very smart uh yeah oh yeah yeah for sure it would get very tiresome if these were longer uh but yeah i i I only give it words because it's it's a step in the right direction but not a leap and i felt to be less consistent than than the last record but other than that yeah they're 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 fun man so yeah i like the like moodier more melodic stuff they do on here well, they're about, it's about to get a lot more prominent. So, you ready? I'm ready. Hell yeah. This is 1995's The Future of What? 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 <laughs> Ooh, a little, little bit about something. Yeah. Oh, her, oh. She's a different drummer now. Oh, yeah. Different band. Yeah. Of course, everyone here needs to play like the song's the same. <laughs> Does it sound the same? It's, it's, the song is so ugly and cacophonous, but an appropriate opener. Sure, yeah. Again, uh, like it's a great song, but I think a weak opener in the context of everything else in this album. You know, I think this is one of the. No, this is one of the albums where I think this is appropriate for an opener. Thank you, All right. All right. And even saying that, or at least you're out of your fucking. <laughs> this was almost my best. This was almost my personal favorite. You're out of your fucking mind. You're out of your fucking mind. Mike, 50 per, 50% is an F. No, 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 no. So here's the thing. I, and I know you didn't you didn't read the, the history behind this. No, I didn't. Because no, I didn't. the last handful of tracks are bo- uh, CD bonus tracks. Oh, okay. So okay. the album ends at, at Swan. Okay. So Okay. I'm still... Okay, I see that. Yeah. I so see that. I, I completely understand what you're saying. Those, yeah. those bonus tracks are complete and utter filler garbage even without those even without those i'm still i'm still confident you're out of your fucking dude every song on this except for swan i think is is fucking killer every single song do i kind of like yeah i kind of like no because swan does go on a bit too long but i really love like um the drum fills syncing up with the guitar riffs on swan i like that aspect of it but i 
Also, accidents on purpose. Put it on now. <laughs> accidents on purpose. Dude, that was a song was like... I'm in, and I I know where they're going. I know exactly where they're fucking going. Hearing that song. Oh shit! Oh. A brisk one fifty five. Brilliant song. That's always such a strange, strange guitar riff. But when that bass comes in, oh. This is not just some standard post hardcore band. These are unusual riffs with uh, interplay. Three three people, but they're they're fucking using every member to their fullest. Now put on equally stupid. Put on equally stupid. <laughs> I'm making a point here. <laughs> equally stupid is fucking brilliant. <laughs> Dude, this album fucking rules. <laughs> Where is it? Go. Oops. That's the, uh, that's why I, sh- you know. Oh, pardon my French? No. I got my mixers. Mixed oh. Up. Oh. Oh, this fucking riff. Oh, it's so good. See, it's, it's fine. I don't love it, though. I love it. I love it. I don't, yeah, I don't really love anything on here. I just kind of like it. The bass lines in this. Again, the writing is just so. Oddy, oddy, off and odd and strange. And it does. It does feel groovier than most things they've done. This feels more. Uh, you can go lower. Uh, it feels more like experimental and jazzy to me. Uh, just the type of writing. It's just strange and, and dissonant. It's like the most dissonant they've been. Uh, I, I think this is an incredible post hardcore album. I fucking love it so much. You're out of your mind. You're out of your goddamn mind. I don't mind. know. I just had fatigue here. I'm just like the very much how like you felt that last one wasn't a big enough leap. I, same here. This was the album where I knew they were special and I knew they were going crazy. Like, I, this I, is this was a a fucking massive I, step for me. I did not have that that epiphany the way you did here. I yeah, this is where my fatigue set in and I was a little little worried. Oh, reenact the crime. How do you not like reenact the crime? It's so fucking good. I'm surprised you like that because I kind of so good. I kind of thought about Velvet Underground a little bit. You're out of your mind. You make all these weird Velvet Underground connections. Because <laughs> they're fucking there. Because <laughs> they're fucking there. Uh, what else? Where, 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 where am I looking at? Um, uh, dis- dissension. I guess. Dissension. That's, uh, that, yeah, it's all right. I like it a lot, but it, it has like shoegazy style riffs in the under the blanket of noise uh pedals like bricks yep uh it's so noisy that it makes the quieter parts more pretty absolutely i mean yeah this is a another example of them going ham with the dynamics um here comes the dogs absolutely hideous but i think it works uh and here's the here's the thing this is this is what i mean about sarah's drumming her drumming on that song make the song great for me totally it it, it changes the whole personality because the, the rest are just hideous just yeah. absolutely hideous but I, I'm remembering the drums right now. Like that is the riff that, yeah. that, that, that drum line. It's crazy stuff. Very, uh, if that song was an amusement park ride, make me very dizzy, possibly throw up. Possibly. A lot possibly. of stuff is on here is pretty wild. Uh, the reason I ended up not giving it any kind of any, any best or personal favorites. Cause, uh, um, the, it's more of a rev up album for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't like Swan as a closer so much. I, I think it does go on too long, but basically up until that point, uh, every song just kind of gets better and better and better. When it takes, I find myself middle of the album being like, oh, this is awesome. I have to like remember that it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Whereas other albums I feel like are, are a lot better out of the gate. More obvious. Yeah. Uh, but it, I went back to this one like four times. I fucking, I like it a lot. I can't, I can't <laughs> like, I had trouble giving anything worse, but like, how did how is this one worse? <laughs> one, I didn't know about the bonus tracks, but two, right, right. even the, if I did, yeah. even if I did, it th- changes this, when you cut those off. I'll tell you that it does. Yeah. But yeah, just the, the fatigue. And I was just like, Oh boy, like, are we just going to get, you know, they're different, but not different enough for me. Uh, we should actually clarify what we're talking about with the bonus tracks. So do, do me a favor and put on part of my French. I mean, it really doesn't matter what 
I, uh, I, <laughs> you're right. You're right. <laughs> so before you before you hit play, uh, album ends technically at Swan, but on the CD bonus track version, whatever, um, you get another track called Full Explanation of Answer, which is five minutes of ambient noise. It is nothing. Which kind of plays off the ending of Swan. Yes. And then the next two tracks. Three. Sorry, three tracks. Is this. At least it's music. Yeah, it is. So this is part of my French or whatever, and it's it's in the middle of the album. It's just like a spacer song, a minute and a half. But they decided to, to put on... Uh, let's see, 13 straight minutes of this at the end of the bonus tracks. You know what's funny as a CD bonus track? It'd be funnier as a vinyl bonus track because then people would think the record Oh, was, it's super, super... Yeah. Or they would think the record was broken and oh, skipping. Oh, that'd be interesting. You know, look. But it's not. Uh, so 13 minutes of that is it's very clear that they just had the extra time and had no other material. <laughs> just, it's just, just fill it up. It's complete and utter filler. Removing those, I think this is one of their best albums. Uh, but on first listen, I was pretty fucking mad. I'll tell you that. I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. You ruined your album with this. What happened? You know, I don't know. I might, I might come around to the soldier stuff. Uh, it is very much... Uh, it's not, or rather, it's not that different from other post hardcore. Like you listen yeah. to Jeff like Jihu, and you're like, oh, okay, I, I, I see it. I see how they're like the same thing, uh, but I see where they're going, and I see the the types of riffs they're writing are not normal riffs. They're they're way more intricate and interesting. Uh, but anyway, let's move on. Anywho. Let's move forward. Well, uh, well, also somehow moving backwards. Somehow moving backwards. Yeah, this is a. So this came out in 1995, but this is the album that was recorded in 92. This is the first album they've recorded. This first album. This was with the original drummer, Brant Sandino. Uh, this is self-titled. I heard this. I was like, this is going to be a good record. I know. It's weird. Is it weird? I like this more than uh oh uh fake trains yes uh i don't know which one i like more but i get it yeah this is more hardcore punk for sure but strong rips also what uh when this album was released in 95 they uh they toured with brainiac so oh, like, look at that that's how i know they're cool dudes because they they hung out with brainiac hell yeah yeah, so short, sweet, snappy, wild. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good way to describe this album. Yeah, it's uh, less than thirty minutes. It's over immediately. Every song is good, except it's not even a bad song. Don't you say it. It's not even a bad song, but Prospect okay. is bananas. Yeah, uh, it's instrumental and it's the worst produced song they've ever done. It is uh, there. Uh, all the drums in the left channel. And then all the, uh, and the badly mixed guitar and bass in the right and vocals in the in the mm. right. It's uh if I baffling. Had, if I had to guess, I would assume this was mixed on a four or eight track. If they did that, it's only that song too. Really, is, I don't know then. Because I, I, I both times I listened to this, uh, they were on headphones, and I couldn't even focus because it was just what like out of nowhere the song comes on track eight, and all of a sudden it just sounds like fucking ass. I put it on the speakers to. It still Double sounds bad. Yeah. It still sounds bad, but it, it, headphones is 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 unbearable. Um, I thought Rising Blood was interesting because I this threw it on, and then I saw this was technically their first album. But yeah. like, they use strings on Rising Blood, right? And then strings are there strings? I don't or think so. Maybe it's just the way it's. Oh sounded. no, for sure not. No. Okay, never mind. But it sounds like strings, and uh, they're yeah, that, awesome cacophonous use of harmonics in that song. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, you were you know kind of destined to be a band with strings. Here, like again, it was like a step backwards, so I couldn't really. This felt like a a straight up detour because I was I was so on board with the last. I was like, I want to see where they go next, and then I was like, okay, this is still cool, but I'm not. It's not answering any questions for me. Uh, I should have uh, I should have gone back and done it chronologically, but whatever. I thought I thought about that, and I'm glad we didn't because uh, why are we doing it in this order? Well, 
It's just the way it was released. You know, right. It could, it could have been done the other way, but I think I would have, because um, I'm looking back and I think uh, I wouldn't have appreciated this one as much. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Coming out of the gate, this is just a standard punk record, but when you look at what they did, mm-hmm. all of a sudden these songs feel way different. So like on a few different songs, but most of them, Justin sounds just like Guy from Bright to Spring. Well, for God's sake. Especially but, Warm. Yeah, exactly. It's, but uh, specifically in Right to Spring, because yeah. Guy was unhinged there. Right to Spring, I'm sorry, Warm sounds just like Right to Spring, along with You Bite My Tongue. These songs feel like fucking Right to Spring songs. Even, yeah, even the titles are, you can, I mean, they love Fugazi, so you can, yeah. this one more than others, you can, you can feel the Right to Spring and the, yeah. and the even, Fugazi influence. Even the production sounds, it's, it's the most Discord record sounding album by, yeah. by yeah, leaps. I, and then usually I kind of like the the slower, creepier songs, but uh, stuck in the middle of nowhere again. That that doesn't really work for me. Oh, I, I get I get it now, but I like it. I like the bass lines there. And then uh, my favorites close out. You know, kid is gone. Oh yeah, I love it. And then candy corn with a backwards R and a K. <laughs> yep, candy corn ritual. Oh, I mean. Corny is spelled with a K in this song. <laughs> Wish it was be a lot cooler if it was a backwards art, but be a uh, lot cooler. Uh yeah, good good ass songs. Kid has gone, got some fucking riffs. Uh, and then Candy Corn is, is pure pure chaos, but still madness. manages to feel catchy. Oh yeah, it's it's still a song. It's yeah. not it's not just crazy for the sake of being crazy. So uh and then the album just kind of kind of ends. It just just kind of slunks out and, and leaves you there, and you're like, that's it. Yeah, I'm going back for more. It was yeah, it's it's over immediately. Uh, it's very cool. It still retains their style, but uh, obviously shorter, more aggressive. I'm glad, even though I do like this, I, I'm I'm very glad they went in the direction they did and they got Sarah instead. And it's just also this also um, Brent. He's not a terrible drummer. He's like on par with with Sarah on the first album. Like he's sure. he's fine, but he's sloppy. Um, obviously different different type of playing. He's playing more yes. straight straightforward harker punk, but it's cool it's neat um not one of the best to me but also still undeniably fun and i love this shit so yeah <laughs> but we got a few more oh well, yeah mm-hmm. nice little detour there now we're getting back we're and back on the road we're back on the road to progressing this is 1996's repetition <laughs> The next few albums, I think, have openers like this or intros like this. Really. Yeah, I, just, I thought this one was shorter. I know one of them I probably should have. One of them is like two minutes. Yeah. yeah. I the, go ahead. Oh man, this I this like just hearing that bass. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'm back in. Back in. I'm back in. I think. I can feel it in my bones. This one's going to be different. This album is the possibly the most quiet production. Like, the most contained, small sounding. Mm. Like, there's no crazy feedback anywhere. Like, they get clingy, yeah. but it's not, like, clipping or anything. I love how fucking loud it, it gets, to like, with the screaming. Um, yeah. should say they... Except for the last album, all of these albums are produced by the same guy. So, you no, know, the last one was the same guy as well. Oh, they gave, they ended up giving him a Steve C. Fisk. Yeah, on the self-titled, right? Uh, is the last? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or no, leaves. To- oh no, that's that's the last one. Though. Oh, you mean? Oh, I think with the previous, you hit the last, last one. Sorry, yeah, final, uh, the, gotcha. the final gotcha. album. Yeah, you're right. Sorry, you're right. You're, um, Sorry for the confusion. Confusion. But yeah, oh, yeah. Mm. 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 awesome spot. So juicy. Uh, this one I think is my most neglected un- uh, unwound album, but this, it's it was it's also still one of the better ones. Yeah, this is like a, a turning point for the band. I think uh, at this point, it's the best they've they've sounded. You're 
saying it. I sounds, disagree. I disagree. Um, but still, it's still, I mean, you mean production wise, like, yes. and also tight wise, they're a lot tighter now yes. than ever. Um, I don't, I don't, again, this is another example. Like that song is unwound as hell and it's decent. I think it's not a great opener, all things considering like Corpus Pose is, f- I mean, fucking. That's so different. It's so <sighs> different. And Love then. It. And then I was reading like the keyboard part in Corpse Pose is like a homage to Weezer. I'm like, so fucking weird. You'd never guess that. You'd ne- never I, guess yeah, that. I never would have. I didn't think of that. Uh, and, and the writing is already getting, I mean, it's, it's been getting more interesting, but it's getting more and more and more interesting. Like Unauthorized Autobiography, fantastic, tight title. as hell. Hilarious title. Great. Great. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Vern really hits it out of the park on his bass playing there. Motherfucker is super, super underrated with some of these bass lines. It's it's yeah and then uh i think l- l- you were talking about how like the the quiet loud dynamics would get better i think a good example of that is lowest common denominator yeah um mm, yeah the the loud parts and the noise parts with the the bass and guitar playing is just really awesome that song man it's so again it's not it's not like they haven't done loud quiet loud stuff before but it's but there's still, something about that one it doesn't feel derivative of their other stuff it still feels completely new and unusual yes which is i don't know how the fuck you do that i couldn't tell you the science behind that but it's it's fa- it's fascinating and then they decide to do a dub reggae song i know which i Sensible. like i'm not it's not for me i like it i think it's cool like add some add some variety to the to the album i appreciate a little variety but i'll tell you one thing a reggae a, a stray reggae song has never made an album better in my entire <laughs> life it's not for me well you know they're not singing no, no, it's instrumental. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Imagine, fuck it. These guys come out, come out of the gate with the Jamaican accents. Oh, oh. Uh, Lady Elect, very nice. On the slow dramatic side, but nicely done. Um, I think it's fucking beautiful. By 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 the time it ends, um, putting your nails on a chalkboard. Talk about a drum beat that drives the song. That one specifically. Yeah, they had a little story about how a. I think they were opening up for Sonic Youth. I may be wrong. Don't quote me. Um. They were opening up for someone in Europe and the venue told them to start playing, even though they didn't let anyone in and were letting people in as Unwound was playing. Uh-huh. So they just did 15 minutes of fingernails. Really? On a chalkboard. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of 15 minute version of that, because they're like, fuck you. Oh, I love it. I love a good troll story. Yeah. Uh, I'm with especially specifically with musicians yeah i don't blame them for like you're not playing for anyone everyone's walking in the vent what's the point yeah oh god damn that's that's fun um murder movies i think it's fine but it's not the most memorable thing on there it's again another really dreadlock g hugh sounding song uh but it's also it's also so short that it doesn't even matter Mm -hmm. uh and short and near the end of the album let me uh let me pull up devoid um Because they do what I like to call like a quiet breakdown. Yeah. Where it's, yeah, usually, you know, breakdowns are that's where you get your aggression, your energy out. But here it's just like. Let's take a little breather. Yeah. Just chill. Oh, man, listen to that. That, it's a Fugazi ass baseline with this bitter as fuck guitar line just yeah. and then yeah Sarah's beats and fills are just so so creative now the riffy she's not a fucking filler no she's just it's very riffy yeah that's a fucking yeah, cool song things like that um, I appreciate go to Dallas and take a left fucking awesome driving instrumental instrumental another instrumental one um, and then uh yeah, for your entertainment. Another, another, another strong closer. Like it, I, at this point, I was almost getting bored at how good the band. Like, like <laughs> obviously, this is every album is gonna be all good. Right, all right, this isn't fair, guys. We get it. Um, yeah, I'm surprised you like go to Dallas and take a left because I would argue that's a reggae riff. Oh, uh, really? And then if this gets faster and faster, and yeah, interesting, explodes. Well, that's how you best. fucking win me over. Yeah, yeah. No, if you like slow, now we gotta play. It. Now we gotta play it. Now I got to, and even though I pulled up the next album. Maybe more like ska. Oh, I mean the, the rhythm of it. Yeah. yeah, this doesn't sound ska or, or at all to me. I could imagine uh, 
Sting singing over this. Sorry, I don't know what that was. I don't know what that was. Yeah, you do a better peanut sting. Sorry. I could just sing. Even a drum has a little bit of that that Ricky Flair to it. Like Copeland, yeah. Uh, I found that, so I do dig Rock song. Rock uh, I found it, yeah, not not quite as consistent or memorable as, as uh, not the well, not the last one, the one before last one, fucking uh, future what, but what what, but it it is very clear the direction they're going uh, again lay people probably wouldn't see this as anything different than anything but they're, they're, they're fucking elaborating they're getting they're getting smarter and it's i would say they're they're they're, they're adequate steps they're not baby steps they're not leaps mm-hmm. it's just each step is like okay i see what they're doing i see what they're i see what they're doing uh good stuff good stuff but we got a couple more yes a couple more so yes moving on to 1998. This is wait. That was a weird wording. This is 1998's challenge for a civilized society. This one has quite the shut up. Uh, I don't know where it is or when it starts, but it takes talk over it. Yeah. So um, this was one. Sleater Kenny and Elliot Smith were blowing up. I uh, see. And Kill Rock Star was like, "Oh, hey, we have we have money now. <laughs> we have money now. Yeah. Uh, maybe we should try to market you guys for once. Yes. Uh, which had mixed results, but also this is the first time they recorded demos before going into the studio. Ah, uh, it's very useful because they were they were on tour all the time. Yeah. <laughs> He's got time for demos. Yeah. So I think... um, There we go. I think being more prepared, being able to kind of feel these these things out. Yeah. This is the the loudest and clearest we've ever heard Justin's vocals, and it's awful. On this song. On this this song. Again, this fucking... I think I like the song, but I think it's a weak opener and it's misleading as fuck. It's so crazy. Yeah, it's such a crazy. Well, you kind of think you're gonna get more of the same, and you are not. No, yeah. I love that. What's your riff, though? You know what? Put on the second track because this is where things kind of change a little bit. Because again. Openers are strange. That's like, yeah, totally different guitar player. This is fucking, oh, I love this song so much. Yeah, this is what my ears like perked up, like, huh? That, again, that those bass lines, man, he plays against Justin. It's such a smart thing to do for a three-piece. I fucking love that shit. It's like they're both playing long notes and it lines up. It's yes. so strange. Yes. All right, all right. Okay. And this song gets fucking wild too. Yeah, that was a good ass song. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, if people are nerds for dates, you'll notice they didn't follow up immediately. There's a two year gap. Two year gap. Um, you know, they kind of chalk it up to being comfortable, like. They're like, oh, we we got everything we want. We don't need to record songs. Uh-huh. Uh, Sarah was thinking about going back to school. Justin was more focused on other projects. Uh, but eventually, when you know it came time to do it, they wanted to make tighter uh, songs that expanded their sound. Yeah. And I think it really it shows. It shows best album. Whoa! Yeah. Whoa! Yeah! Whoa! Yeah! Whoa! And so I, I what? Went, went back and like I what? Said, like I said, went back and forth. What? Went back and forth. What? Back and forth. Okay. Went <laughs> back and forth. Uh, and this, I this was in the running, like out, out of the gate, like oh, this is it. This is gonna be this is probably gonna be it's gonna be hard to top this. And I took it out of the running completely. Yeah. And then I put it back in the running, and it ended up coming out on top just because. Don't get me wrong. This is like my second. It's an incredible album, yeah. and the reason I feel it's a bit. Uh, track for track, 
it's hard to beat these songs. The pacing isn't the best, isn't their best paced album, I don't think. Mm -hmm. But it is one of the best. Like, it, it, I mean, if I'm putting comparing this to to I'm already forgetting the fucking name of the album every time. Future of what? Uh, that one I said had a rev that takes a while to get going. That's ultimately what took it out for me. This sure. comes in hot, stays there, it does. and then in the middle, it takes you on a fucking journey you were not, you were never expecting, there and it ends why super fucking strong. There's so many nice pleasant surprises here yeah. like the world is flat hell like, yes the snare roll intro carries the, it. it it's so fucking cool and then um also i feel like most bands would have done that snare roll and it would have crescendoed fairly quickly uh unwound they kind of they stay on it longer than most bands would have and then on top of it it's already good song already good song yeah. you don't need to do anything to it they said let's wait sorry no no no. that's a different song but right. uh yeah i like the howling on there it's it's crazy it's that chorus riff chorus riff it's so fucking pissed off it's such a, a a fucking polar opposite of the rest of the song which is oddly pretty mm -hmm. god damn it's i i love it I and love then it. yeah one of the is it an instrumental if which if, one uh sonata for loudspeakers yeah yeah sonata, um yeah. It's one of the few times I'm like, man, those riffs are pretty. And this is the one where I'm like, it's already a good song. You don't need anything. They go. Let's throw a trumpet. Let's throw some trumpets and it's going to work perfectly. It's going <laughs> to elevate the song to yeah. leaps and bounds where you can't imagine it without the trumpet. It's such a great song. It, again, slower, calmer. It's fucking pretty as hell. Now they're like, they, they dabbled in like quieter, prettier stuff, but it mostly was, uh, it, it, it mostly felt like, like you would just get like a, a smattering or yeah, just just some of it peppered in it there. felt more like it was used to space to to, to put as, as like a buffer between the crazy chaotic stuff but here they're they're full That's on the full am song. amazing songwriters like yeah. like there was no hiding how talented they are at writing at this point and then even songs that i don't think are the greatest serve a valuable pacing purpose like no tech which is it's a it's a minute and 42 seconds it's fast it's full of fucking snappy ass cowbells it's not a crazy good song but it's a it comes on after it's not for loud speakers yeah. it's a perfect pacing choice to like all right we're gonna mix you up real quick some really fast energetic cool sh uh, it's over immediately and then side effects of being tired Ooh. oh boy what is that oh. proto mars volta if don't insult this band i'm kidding it's the, so beefy nine minutes vernon vocals hey Vern. but it's so the the first chunk it's just kind of like a standard unwound song really cacophonous cacophonous and, and brutal but then it decides you know we're gonna stop the song hey, everyone stop and we're just gonna play the weirdest craziest riffs we're gonna jam turn it into a psychedelic thing for nine minutes and it's it's awesome. Amazing. Way better than it has any business being. Uh, I also read that after the two minute, 30 minute mark, every at that section in the song, everyone's playing in a different time signature. Oh, they took some fucking beef heart cues there. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, there were some beef hearty in things earlier. Yeah, but, for sure. Uh, yeah. I, I love that song. Uh, it's, it's so good. Um, uh, after will, that, we're going to go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, real quick before we go any further, I will say, uh, I do kind of like the story of no tech. It's no, no techno. So it's kind oh. of a, kind of a joke song, but it's funny that there are like dancey elements to yeah, it. Yeah. So it's, it's very groovy. Uh, lifetime achievement Award is fucking gorgeous and it's, it's nice and pretty and, and super well written, but it also has the creepiest production with these like sounds like children's voices kind of coming like warped kids voices coming in and out. So what that is, is, you know, Justin's a weirdo. He would go to like garage sales and stuff uh -huh. and this like buy home recordings. Oh, wow. That's very, that sounds like shit my brother does. Yeah, it, well, it that, does. Yeah. And then, yeah, when he like has writer's block or whatever, he just puts on the home recordings. Yeah. And this one, and they, they do play it at the end, is like old ladies singing happy birthday backwards. Oh, yeah. And for his brain, so weird the way it works. He heard like an interesting melody in there, uh, and he's like, that's a song. That, <laughs> that's it. That's a song. That's it. <laughs> he could have his own fucking Bohemian Rhapsody movie. Um, 
what else? So yeah, I'm so, like, damn, I don't know how you get a melody out of listening to old ladies singing happy birthday backwards, but I they, see it, man. They're, 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 they're hidden everywhere. Say, they're yeah. hidden everywhere. Uh, I, I wish the album ended with what, what went wrong. I feel like it should. I mean, cause the, the last I, track is as a two minute untitled track and it's, mm. uh, well, it's, I guess it's called X L and T. Yeah. But it's, yeah. Um, it's untitled and streaming. I do. I do think having like, you know, these two longer jammier songs, next to each other kind of kind of hurt yeah that's why it's that's ultimately why like this isn't isn't their greatest pace thing ever but it's still uh right. that's what I mean, like, it's so- re- real fucking good and song for song it's hard to top uh yeah so back to what went wrong one of the most dark and dramatic songs but it's fucking awesome it's super long it has a lot of slint slint minimalism in there mm-hmm. uh fantastic eight minutes that just flies by uh and it's like this is probably the but this album and then the next album are like the two biggest leaps in progress. Like I thought they were going in a direction and I was expecting this level of evolution in such a short amount of time. No, neither was I. It's insane. Uh, totally unique writing and type performances. And and I, I used to stand by this being the best produced one out of all of them. Uh, I think it, it had the most budget behind it for sure. You could, you could, you could definitely hear it. Probably. Probably. Uh, you're probably right in that. Yeah, it's aspect. not the most adventurous production, but it is definitely the 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 most professionally pulled off. I think. I yeah, I think that would be correct. But my best, and but we got one more, baby. We got one more. Y'all yes. know what's going to happen right now. All yes, right, you do. It says 2001's leaves turn inside you. This one I fast forwarded a bit. Oh yeah. So it's this basically a two minute long THX yep. paint truck. But gorgeous. What this is, is this riff? Gorgeous. What is, this is not the same band. For one, that's two guitars doing two different things. Yes. Which uh, is hard for a band with only one guitar player. <laughs> yes. I think part of that uh, well, I'll get into some of the history yeah. of it. Um, they were pretty much all living in different places here and i think it this kind of left justin on his own to fuck around um in the studio also it's produced by the band uh they- you can tell in this song this is the, i think one of the worst produced songs on the album it's yeah even the the guy steve is it steven fisk steve fisk yeah yeah he's like he's like look <laughs> I would have done things differently on this album, but it's amazing. He's like, it's still amazing. I I stand by that. Yeah. That's, I stand by that clearly. Yeah, this, this this song is produced oddly. The vocals are way in the front. Of it. He's also singing now, mm-hmm. and then drums are covered in flanger. It sounds like, and way in the back. I love it. Um, yeah, that was one of the things uh, Fisk was talking about. Was like. You only have so many tracks. Yeah. And they recorded the drums with all these tracks, but once you were, you know, this is before computers. Yeah. Once you reduce them to what they are, you can't, you can't go back. You yeah. can't. So, you can go to lower. This gives a, a pretty decent idea of what's happening and why they're different, but. Obviously, best personal favorite. Personal favorite. Holy shit! No one uh, could have. Said, no one saw this coming. No one saw this coming. I didn't see this coming. No. I, you know, three songs in, I'm like, okay, this is a double album. Yeah. They can't keep this up. There's no way. Not on a double <sighs> album. <laughs> oh boy, do they keep it up? They. <sighs> Jesus insane Christ! Insane album. And the band is in like such disarray. So like. Sarah moved to Portland, I believe. And then what she know isn't that far. You can you can do that on the weekends. Right. Uh Vern though. Vern is a functioning alcoholic and has been. Was. Was. Uh but um and then he is in a messy divorce with his wife, and he's like, I'm going to take off to Las Vegas. 
<laughs> that's never a good sign. No, that's never a good sign. no. He wanted to get his bartending license and he's like, I'll, you know, make a lot of money in Vegas and then we can do like all this cool shit. That never happened. <sighs> that's making um, me sad. I've heard those promises before. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so the practices were few and far between. Um, you know, this is kind of this Justin. Yeah. Like taking, they, they taking, built their own studio, right? They did. <laughs> and yeah, kind of fucked him over. There's something about like being on a, on a farm. And I think Vern used to live there uh-huh. <laughs> when he's like, well, I'm going to Vegas. Justin's like, well, you're leaving and Sarah's not here. So I have to fucking move. Yeah. I have to live there now. Jesus Christ. And, um, man, like, what a madman he is for getting uh, these ideas to use all these like mellotrons and synthesizers. Yep, fucking and cellos. It, so it's, also, it's a fucking, it, I, I will uh, that first song. And it's funny. I thought it when I was listening, like they're channeling some like classic rock yeah, on ele- one, yeah. elements without sounding like classic rock. And then I read them say that in the book. I'm like, Mm, I fucking Mm-mm. we're on the same page motherfuckers putting that putting all these albums you've heard to use yes so the, the, it's it's so hard to explain this album because there's so, there's so many different things that it does and so many wildly different places it goes so look a ghost is where I was like this is taking so everything I loved about so the original style and then hey now we got fucking cellos in here now we're making it way deeper now we're just making this the greatest style ever i'm it's, in love with that fucking song this makes me so sad that this is this good and this is the band exploding because yeah i want i want to know like what's the follow-up i was this album made me very very bummed out that they, they broke up because this is it's not I mean, just potential. Were, like some of this is so fully realized. It's it's insane. Oh yeah, yeah. Like um, I don't. Probably the band Cursive was around at this time, but you know they. You know I thought of Cursive a few times while listening to this. Um, December. It, it, there's some rough production parts, but like December, sure. all around. I yeah. I like the way that one's mixed. There is some like. Uh, going back and forth on the left and right. Yeah, it, it's a real bass-driven track. Uh, and that breakdown on three minutes in, mm. fucking beautiful. Mm. Uh, my So this is why to give this one best. It's like, it's not just the length. Like, the length, I, I, I kind of, I, I forgive I the it. length. I love it. I forgive the length because of how insane some of the stuff is. This is one of the more pleasurable double albums we've done on this podcast. There's several songs that I wish were cut for the sake of pacing. Uh, Demon Sings Love Songs or Demons Sing Love Songs, uh, One Lick Less, and Scarlet, even though I do like Scarlet a lot. I I can see your point on Demon Sings Love Songs, but the other two, no. I, I found them. One Lick Less to be the, the worst song on the album by far. Like, not, no. even, not even close. Uh, no. I, like... You know how they like bring the classic rock elements in on the other songs, but it never sounds like classic rock. Yeah, that's how I feel about one like less, but with shoegaze. Like, there's the shoegaze yeah. elements, but you never think. No, I didn't think shoegaze. Not uh, one bit. It, it it's, is produced very shoegazy, but it just says it's not written like like one of those songs. Fugazi. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we're past fugazi. Um, yeah, Scarlet. I was like, what the fuck is this? An ISIS song? Is this ISIS? The band, not the terrorist group. Dude, a few of these are full on ISIS songs, I, such as, such as, such as fucking, uh, I mean, it's, it's a whole discussion. As soon as I bring up the name of it, it's a whole discussion below the salt. Oh, it's a whole fucking discussion. God. Un-fucking real. That it's is a co- cool post-rock song. I, look, I like Who Cares a lot, but. Let me tell you, if the album just ended with Below it should, the, the Salt. It should have ended with Below the Salt. Not that, that, not that Who Cares isn't, isn't also cool, but. That is their swan song. Yeah. yeah. I I love that song so much. I love the way. Um, this is one of the instances where the drums are, are handled well. I love the way the crashes, this kind of like wash over you. Uh. Mm, it's just, it's just a. The bass is awesome. The 
The piano is cool. Piano is very well, uh, very tastefully implemented on on the wall in this album. It's the only album with piano. But that song and Terminus is another one where the piano was like, all right, mm. that's fucking okay. Yeah, yeah. The below the salt, this uh, a five out of five song star. I don't have any complaints about that song. It's incredible. It's incredible. It's one of the best. It's so subtle but epic. It really reminded me of of ISIS, even though it is more post rock than. Totally post metal or whatever, but the other the other epic we got to talk about, of course, is Terminus. Uh, man, such unusual guitar lines, and like the first chunk of it, I'm like, okay, I, I could see this not working for people. It's very, it's kind of abrasive and and, and odd and a weird song. Mm-hmm. But then it goes full Godspeed in the middle. It does. It, it's like I wish, full Godspeed. I wish all like when I think of prog rock, I think more of things like Terminus, and I know that's not, but yeah. Man, I wish prog rock sounded like Terminus. And then the string stuff in that song is so damn ooh, good. God damn. That final section where they, the 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 full band comes back together, dude. Ooh. You could you could cut a movie trailer to the parts oh. with the cello on it. 100%. That's that's how fucking big and epic Terminus is. Fucking uh, off the century and the mm. rad one. Super mm. spacey production on that. One. Well, there's a lot of spacey production on on the whole thing. Uh, and it's like again, it's 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 cool production. It's really ambitious production, but it's just not very immaculate like they, he's clearly not a professional yes they were they, they were very smart in the the help they bought in oh yeah um because basically it was like okay we don't know what we're doing so we'll bring in we'll bring in kit billman and uh someone else i forget and that way any mistakes we make uh-huh. they can just kind of be like look guys you need you need yeah. to do you need to do this I mean that that's what you, I mean, even, you have no experience. Why the hell not? And then yeah, even the um Justin and who is it? Is it Brent? Brent's the original drummer. Yeah. No, he was hanging out with someone. Probably Derek Johns. Oh yeah, Brent um was hanging out with Justin. And yeah, they went up to Fisk's Fisk's? Fisk's. Fisk? Fisk's. Fisk? Fisk's. They went up to his studio. <laughs> And uh, that's where they did a lot of the string stuff. Yeah. A lot. Like you can see Brant is like credited for a hundred different instruments on this album. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Piano, vibraphone, harpsichord, mellotron, organ, uh, mostly keys. And then, yeah, yeah, Derek Johnson does cello. And then, yeah, that was like all done at Steve Fisk place. So, uh, yeah, very smart to like, we want to do this, but also, also we're going to cover our bases just yeah. in case we fuck up. Fuck man! It, ultimately, it it works out pretty well because like you don't really hear any fuck ups. You just hear the roughness of the mixing. Mm-hmm. Like where where bass is a little, it's a little rough. It's like a, I think it's just just too much low end on the bass on a lot a lot of these songs, um, which I usually don't mind anyway. But and then the drums aren't aren't crisp at all. They're they're kind of they're a little bit muffly. And then the vocals I think sound the roughest. Like mm-hmm. they they don't they. I don't know how to, how to explain or to verbalize how how cheap they sound. They sound very cheap, mm-hmm. and they're doing the most vocally ambitious stuff they've ever done. It just sounds cheap because because the production. Yeah, they uh, Fisk jokingly called it their bamboo studio because uh, you know who knows if this is true or like an urban legend, but you know you hear stories about like places that are untouched by civilization. And then they saw like airplanes and they're like, what the fuck? It was the village. With, by yeah, it was Shyamalan. the village. And their brains are like, what is this? And so they built like bamboo planes uh-huh. to like. To, oh, to replicate it. And so he's like, that's what their studio. Like they had no idea what a studio they, was. That's hilarious. So they called it their bamboo studio. Man, like uh, this is what we think a studio is. Yeah. Let's record some brilliant music, people. Yes. Uh Summer Freeze, along with One Like Less, are like is, are the most ambitious, uh, most vocally ambitious songs. Uh, tons of like overdubs and in harmony stuff going back. And it's again, he's not a good singer, so it's mm-hmm. it's kind of rough. But uh, I really like October All Over. Great, uh, they do great. S- they do spooky dance music now, and it's amazing. Fucking so good. And Radio Gra, dude, that's the one where I'm like, I'm so there's no words to explain. 
how sold this, I yeah. am by a song like that. This is continuing the like the epic use of strings and the strings mm. are incredible. It's gorgeous. Uh, really weird samples throughout. It's just uh, it's fucking creepy and it's beautiful. Instru- instrumental, uh, Mellotron's all over the place. It, it's fantastic. I mean, I think they're they're the synth strings. They're not real strings, yeah. but uh, it's gorgeous and haunting, man. Goddamn fucking what, a! What a fucking album that. <laughs> one of those i'm like i could have been listening to this all these years but it's in my life now and that's what's important dude god oh, we we all call some fucking shit dude like <laughs> i i'm very grateful to have finally heard this band and, and well again like i had no frame of reference so i was like yeah they're just in the post post hardcore band what's what i thought that's what i thought fuck no dude they're fucking brilliant god damn oh, oh, changed man after this album changed and then yeah jesus christ they fucking broke up the next year on april fool's day so people thought it was a joke I hate that I hate that and yeah they didn't they never got back together and Vern died and i'm depressed now yeah that was that was what 2019 or 2020 2020 Fair, 2020 or fairly recently two two years ago as of recording this jesus christ um yeah it's a bummer god fucking damn it um just a just a, a gem for the last album alone yeah I don't, yeah i mean I, I love every album uh yeah i think yeah, they all offer yeah. as much crazy different stuff but yeah you're you're you clearly walked away a bigger fan but yeah i am those last two albums holy the, shit because uh we, we had to reschedule and you said you had two albums left i was like he hasn't even he hasn't heard the i, mean, I was like whoa he he's about to get a fucking surprise I, i'm about to get blown away yeah and yeah and i was yeah i was i was excited I was like okay if he's got those two i mean I I, 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 I did try it. to make up for it by by reading the the little booklet that came with the box. Oh right, yeah, for sure. Uh, but goddamn, delightful, delightful, goddamn, goddamn. I'm just gonna keep saying goddamn for the rest of the episode. I'm gonna say cot damn, cot damn it. Uh, but yeah, let's just let's do a little recap. Uh, it's f- fucking easy for me. <laughs> Worst, least favorite, the future of what? Out of your fucking. Uh, just, out of your fucking mental. Much Fuck like how out. Mike didn't like new plastic ideas because it wasn't a big enough leap. Same. Hard same, but on a different album. And then leaves turn inside you. Let me tell you something, brother. <laughs> mean Gene. If you like post rock, if you like rock music, if you like music, <laughs> please. If you like. <laughs> please go listen to this fucking album. It's heavy duty. It's lengthy. There's a lot of stuff on there that is not for, I mean, post-rock fans must hear it at the very least. I I could kind of, I, I left out the part where uh, Vern played on Blonde Redhead, one Blonde Redhead album. Oh, that's right. Yeah. It, I forget which one it was. And then, um, yeah, I, you can kind of hear like the Blonde Redhead influence on there. So they can be just as good. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they were, they were friends, but. Mm. there we go uh yeah and for me uh new plastic ideas worst least favorite good album but just stuck with me the least out of all of them challenge for a civilized society best song for song incredible wonderfully produced uh and then of, of course leaves turn inside you personal favorite ambitious as all hell wild a little rougher on the edges but gorgeous and truly unique ah uh, yeah oh, when- you know, when you're rough around the edges and you're sincere and have amazing sound writing, it doesn't even matter. Doesn't even matter, man. All is forgiven. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Also, looking at their influences, we've covered a few of these bands. Oh, yeah. Melvin's, yeah. Fugazi, Wipers, Black Flag, Mission of Burma, Who's Could Do. Uh, and then the other ones are to be determined, but it, we will for sure get around to them i'll tell you right now i'm a fan of every single band listed except for one who i haven't heard a lot of and we've got requests for most of them and we probably will cover them at some point for yes, sure yes. uh hell yeah but thank you all so much for listening and watching thank you cole for, su- for just suggesting this and giving us money and helping us and making sure we do these things changing my life changing my life hell yeah financially and musically uh if you want to support us and uh and you sh- of course you want to support us you sat through this entire episode you really want to support us subscribe and, and like and comment and share and all that horse shit that really 
helps us out. Appease the almighty evil algorithm <laughs> because otherwise we will be poor forever. And you don't want that. We don't want that. We do not want that. Uh, Spotify plays on Unwound. You can find a link in the description. Plays associated with all the episodes, as you know, everyallmember.com. Uh, Patreon. Dot com slash every album ever bonus episodes early access to the loose ends episodes 20 percent off all merch of course tier two bigger than jesus tier they get to jump the line and actually get us to cover these albums which is important for us and for uh, the world sure uh and yeah i think that's it for patreon oh yeah you can also see our schedule and vote on stuff it's, it's a cool little little community there um Growing, growing by the minute. Growing, growing, growing. Uh, you can follow me on all social media at Pounder Monkey, and you can follow Alex on Instagram. At Mother Puncher. Hell yes. I think that's it for the plugs. Yes. The plugs. The plugs. So, final song. What are we doing? I feel like you're 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 bigger fan. Like, you love the entirety of this I band. I do love the entirety of this band, but there's no way I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick something that we don't both love. Not, not on my birthday. Is it? Is that today? It is today. It's to, <laughs> dude, it's today. We're potty on your birthday. That I, sucks. I like, you know, I like it. <laughs> I'm so bad with birthdays, and everybody's no. birthday is in February. Yeah, yeah. So I remember none of them. No, I don't. I don't blame anybody. Like, my father's birthday was last week. I had no idea. Um. Oh, it's not even on here, son of a bitch. Oh, whoa, whoa, oh whoa. wait, it's on Empire, though, right? Sorry, it's at, I got all. I got all. It's on it's on Empire. I already, and because of that, I already know what song it is. I was gonna go with something else, but in my heart, that is the one I want everyone to hear. It's the one yeah. we both love, and we have to do below the salt. We have to. We have to. Hell yeah. So thank, okay. thank you so much for listening and watching. Happy birthday, Alex. Thank you. And <laughs> see ya. <laughs>